Happy Saturday, everyone. I just wanted to go over a few tech things that we didn't get to cover on the live stream because we ran out of time. So the first thing I want to go over is Biden admin confirms using financial surveillance to help feds catch Jan Sixers. So the Treasury Department has admitted that it helped law enforcement catch people involved in the January 6th capital breach by urging banks to comb through their private transactions of customers using terms like MAGA and Trump as part of the surveillance scheme intended to fight money launderers but used to hurt Jan Sixers. So it's really interesting that um, FinCEN, the Treasury they're going through and looking at your financial transactions um, for certain terms. So one thing you want to know is that you don't want to put anything like um, Trump, MAGA, storm the Capitol um, that will be flagged and or things like crypto. Maybe that won't be okay in the future. But the one thing that I thought was also interesting was that what was also flagged, if you bought a religious text like a Bible or shopped at bro, uh, Bass Pro Shops and probably Cabela's too. So that makes me think that if I'm going to go to Bass Pro Shop or Cabela's or any store like that, um, even Dick Sporting, I hear, can be, although they no longer sell firearms, you may want to use cash instead of um, a, a check or any type of credit card. So Valentine's Nightmare Romance Scams Remain a Billion Dollar Honeypot for Criminals. We've talked about honey, or sorry, we've talked about romance scams before. And romance scams are ways that someone might contact you. We've had a couple people in this group go through romance scams that they may contact you through Tinder, through Facebook, build a relationship with you, and then suck as much crypto or money out of your wallet as possible. And so Binance's global head of intelligence and investigations gives a handful of antecedental cases that its teams have been involved in dealing with. One user wound up losing $100,000 to a scam who used Tinder to make an initial contact before slowly drawing money out of the victim. Perhaps more telling is another individual who met a cryptocurrency trader on a social media platform over a few months. We're talking long term. The scammer built trust through a direct message and phone calls. The victim would eventually send cryptocurrencies worth a half a million to the scammer before communications were severed. You know, this also goes along with you hear uh, about something, you make a contact, either uh, social media or Tinder, and they say, hey, trade on this platform. It's really great. If you put some money in, they'll double it. And, and so be careful that it's not directly um, you know, from a scammer, but they could be leading you to an exchange that will scam you out of your coins. So Bank of America warns customers of data breach after vendor hack. Bank of America is warning customers of data breach exposing their personal information after Infosys, uh, one of its service providers, was hacked last year. Customers' personal identifiable, identifiable information exposed in the security breach includes affected individual name, address, social security numbers, dates of birth, financial information, including account and credit cards, according to details shared with the Attorney General of Texas. So just be uh, aware that Bank of America has had a breach of data, and hopefully you were not included in that. Facebook ad pushes Overstealer password stealing malware. So, a new password stealing malware named Overstealer is spreading through fake job advertisements on Facebook, aiming to steal account credentials and cryptocurrencies. The fake job ads for management positions and lead users to a Discord URL where a PowerShell script downloads the malware payload from a GitHub repository. So, just be careful when, you know, it's not just jobs, it's it's anything, that if they're leading you to like a Discord or, uh, um, you know, somewhere outside of uh, Facebook, you know, maybe that's not the best place. Maybe you should go directly to their website and see if they really are offering jobs. Well, Jay covered this one in the live stream 
And uh, I saw this, that the new member of the Hedera Council, Mendez, is now working to develop a distributed ledger technology based on solutions from Hedera, focusing on digital transformation initiatives and supply chain management, according to a press release. So um, that company, I think, has brands, yeah, like Oreo, Ritz, Cadbury, Dairy Milk, and Toblerone. Fake Curve Finance App listed on Apple Store. A fake app impersonating decentralized finance protocol Curve has been listed on Apple's App Store. According to a February 14th warning issued by developers, there is currently no official DeFi Curve app. Beware of scams, Curve Stav wrote. A fake one with a logo was spotted. Stay safe. So just be aware, just because it's on Apple, um, the, the store does not mean that it's legit because here we have another one. Fake LastPass password manager spotted on Apple's App Store. I don't know how this stuff gets past Apple because I remember putting apps uh, on the Apple App Store and we had to jump through a ton of hoops. But LastPass is warning that a fake copy of its app is being distributed on the Apple App Store, likely used as a phishing app to steal users' credentials. The fake app uses a similar name to the genuine app, a similar icon, and a red-themed interface to make the, it appear close to the brand's authentic design. However, the fake app's name is Lass, L-A-S-S-P-A-S-S, -S -S, instead of LastPass, and its publisher is, who knows, and who really cares? But just be careful what you're downloading. Uniswap founder warns community about ENS wallet impersonation scam. And this is really kind of interesting. I know uh, when uh, ENS came out way back in the day, uh, I was interested and then I was not interested. And I'll kind of go over that in a little bit. Uh, Hayden Adams, the founder of Decentralized Exchange, Uniswap has warned the crypto community about a scam using wallet addresses as Ethereum name services or ENS domains. On February 14th, Adams shared a warning on X about scammers impersonating his Ethereum wallet. The executive explained that the scammers copied and registered his wallet address as an ENS wallet with .eth. Furthermore, Uniswap founder said pasting his wallet address in some user interfaces would also show an E and S match unrelated to his address at the top. So basically what an ENS is, you can take a wallet address and you can, instead of having to know all these characters, you could just say George.eth or register some name like that. So if you, let me get this out. This address is his real address because it ends in a DDA, and that is the address here, which is the real address, ends in DDA. Well, scammers are taking what would be an ENS, like a, a name here, dot eth and they're taking the address and they're putting a dot eth but it really goes to this address instead of the real one so just know um, if you send it to something with a dot eth that is a ethereum ens address and you may not be sending it to the right address. So just make sure that nothing ends in .eth if you don't know um, the exact address. So just, you know, be warned on that. ExpressVPN bug has been leaking some DNS requests for years. The, the bottom line on this story is that as you make things more complex um, in your life and applications and software, Things typically don't run as well as if you keep them simplified, just as in life. But if you split tunneling um, feature allows users to selectively route some internet traffic in and out of the VPN tunnel, providing flexibility to those needing both local access and secure remote access simultaneously. A bug in this feature caused DNS requests of users not to be directed to the ExpressVPN infrastructure as they should, but to the user's internet service provider. So just 
you know, keep things simple, but know that this was a, a bug that they've had out there for years and it has been fixed. So Bitcoin ETF are sucking up 10 times more Bitcoin than miners can produce. This is just good to know uh, because as we come to the halving, you have to see that when we had the last halving, we went from 12 and a half to six and a quarter. And now we're going to be going down to 3.125 Bitcoin um, mined for each block. So as we shrink the number of Bitcoin being produced every year and the ETFs coming and sucking up a lot more, that's probably going to change the price of Bitcoin and just thought I'd let you know. So this part, I, I did cover the very last part of the show. And if you have DOT, you will be, uh, well, if you hold your DOT um, in yourself and not at a uh, exchange or not at Caleb and Brown, you will be getting something called dead. It's a meme coin and uh, they don't yet have a date. They're just saying, quote unquote, soon. So if you hold DOT, you will get a, uh, an airdrop. Um, if you don't hold DOT and it's on an exchange or Kalen Brown, well, you're not going to get it all and don't even ask for it because probably they're not going to give it to you. Now, one of the big questions people had, well, I had, was do we have to hold it in a particular wallet? And there is a bit of information on their website and they said, if you held it in the Nova, the Talesman, the Sub Wallet or Fearless Wallet, those wallets will absolutely positively get the airdrop. But I checked those wallets out and they were not um, ledger compatible. They weren't even um, treasure compatible, meaning that you couldn't hold your dot in your ledger and use one of these wallets. Well, I did some research. And what if I'm staking using a ledger device? Wallets connected to a ledger device will still qualify for the dead airdrop. There is a caveat, however. The current Polkadot app on Ledger devices does not currently support signing messages on the system chain like Asset Hub. This will be remedied when the new Zonda X Ledger app is released, uh, ETA Q1 of 2024. What does this mean for me? You will receive the dead airdrop you will not be able to transfer or swap the dead with the ledger account until the new app is released. So that's really all I have for this week. Everybody have a great weekend. See you next week.